Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. So I was recently out boating in New York City and I heard a distress call come in on channel 16. In this case, the distress call was about a boat that was starting to take on water. That's never a good thing when you're out on a boat. You really don't want to be taking on water. It turns out that this particular boat was traveling at a pretty high rate of speed and hit something on the ground, put a hole in the bottom of the boat, and water started coming into the boat. So I grabbed my camera and I knew that the boat was going to be coming back to a safe harbor and I was actually in that harbor already. So I got some footage of the boat being tugged in by the authorities um, and you can actually see that the boat is definitely not in the greatest of shape. It is starting to sink and the people did do their best job to try to get the water out of the boat in a very timely fashion. As you can see here, the boat is being towed to the breakwater of the marina. So the boat is not actually being brought into the marina itself. It's actually outside the marina. It's being left outside of the breakwater. Uh, I think that's probably just because that's one of the quickest and most accessible places that they can actually get to to try to make sure that they start pumping out the water. Once they tie up the boat, you'll notice that there are many, many people that are involved in this entire process. First, you've got multiple boats that are just hovering around the area. Uh, they're probably just responding to the distress calls that were heard on the radio. But what's most important are the people that are going to come in and try to save the boat from sinking. So they're going to take their pumps and their pumps are going to be used to pump out as much water as possible from the bottom of the boat and to try to get it out overboard to save the boat from sinking. Now I can't see what's going on inside the boat in this particular case, so I don't know if they're actually trying to plug the hole. My guess is that this is a pretty big hole and I don't think that they're going to be able to plug it very easily because you can see that quite a bit of water has been taken on and the bow is actually uh, quite high in the water and this is not a very good situation. But let's give these people some credit here and hope that they're gonna be able to solve it and I think that they will be able to do so. One thing that I didn't fully understand is that there seem to be a lot of people that are actually on the boat, thus adding to more weight of the boat. My thought would be that they'd want to have as little people as possible on the boat to make sure that the boat is as high as possible out of the water to make sure that it doesn't go any lower. Of course, water is extremely heavy. That's really going to bring down the weight uh, of the boat and move it towards the bottom. Um, and more people on board, well, that generally doesn't help. So I'm not 100% sure why there's all these people that are actually on the boat. I think a lot of people are just trying to be nice and helpful and contribute to salvaging the boat in some way. Um, but the most important thing is just making sure that that water gets out of the boat and making sure that that water gets out of the boat very, very quickly. By this point, everybody has congregated from different boats at the same spot right here at this boat at the breakwater, and they're now going to begin the process of trying to remove as much water as possible from the boat. You can see a man coming with some equipment. They're now going to set that up and they're going to be using their various tools that they have to suck the water out of the bottom of the boat and eventually dump it overboard to help save the boat. A lot of people working with each other, talking to each other, communicating with each other. And very important, many of the people that are on the boats are wearing life jackets just in case they actually do fall in the water themselves. You definitely don't want that to happen, especially during a very, very time-sensitive operation such as this where everybody's rushing. They could easily trip on something because they're on a boat that they're not familiar with. They want to make sure that they always stay dry at all times. The boat is actually tied on one side to the marina. So if they're not successful, that boat is going to sink and it may actually bring down part of the dock with it also. I've seen that happen many times where boats are tied to the marina, they start sinking and the marina dock actually goes down or the wood actually breaks. In this case, I'm not 100% sure if that would happen because this is a larger dock. It's actually the breakwater for the marina. So it's pretty sturdy and I don't think that it would actually go down. I think the boat would probably just dangle from it, but it is again a rather large boat. So you never know what's going to happen. That's why these teams have to work very, very, very feverishly to make sure that they're getting the water out as quickly as possible because you really don't want this boat to hit the bottom. At low tide in this particular area, the depth is approximately 15 feet and that would completely submerge the boat. So again, speed is what it's all about in this particular case. The entire process of doing so took about 10 minutes and that was it. 
uh, from the time that the boat was actually put onto the dock tied up to the time that the people came on board to actually uh, take the water off of the boat, it only took about 10 minutes. And it looks like they tried to focus on two different areas, the center portion of the boat, and in the center portion of the boat, they are actually trying to uh, pump out water that is on the very bottom. And there's another pump that's being used towards the stern or rear portion of the boat, which looks like that's being used to push out some of the water that's accumulated in the stern. I hope you're enjoying this video. Video, please take a moment to like and subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button so that you're alerted to every time I post something new. The various groups of people seem to be working very well together and it seems like they're members of the Coast Guard, the New York City Police Department, as well as private contractors that are all collaborating to make sure that this is done quickly and efficiently. So after working together for a little bit of time, the moment of truth is arriving. Is this boat going to sink or is this boat going to remain afloat? As you can see, a lot of people are putting a lot of things together and working with the pumps to make sure the pumps actually do work so that water comes out of the pumps and will be able to keep the boat afloat. Many people have collaborated. Many people are observing just to be on standby. And the truth is that this boat actually does make it. In a couple of moments, you're going to see that this boat is going to sit a little bit higher in the water as these teams work very, very successfully together to get the water out of the boat. As you can see right there, the water is now flowing and now it's just a matter of waiting for the water to come out so that they can actually do something about this boat and move it to a different location. They're not going to be able to plug the hole, so the next step is to make sure that they do take the boat out of the water. And again, that needs to be done as quickly as possible while there is a hole in the bottom of the boat. It's an amazing process to watch. It's very nerve wracking because you never know what's going to happen, but this actually turned out to be a very true success on the water in New York City this day. I took this video when the boat was coming back in. Look at this. They managed to actually get the boat almost completely out of the water. And as they're tugging it in, they are still taking water out of the boat. So it's a nonstop process. They're bringing the boat to the marina service dock where they can put the boat into the travel lift and then pull it up out of the water. As I suspected, this does not look good at all. The props are completely ruined and the gash is huge. I don't think that this boat is going to be able to be salvaged in any way, shape, or form. It's probably a total write-off. That's why it's very important when you're boating to use extreme caution and make sure you're following the buoy system, make sure that you're staying away from rocks, and making sure that you're paying attention at all times. Don't get distracted. Well, that was kind of interesting. So what are the lessons learned? Well, I can only really think of one thing, and that's know where you're going. And by knowing where you're going, that means you need to do some planning in advance, and when you're actually out there, you need to use your GPS. So historically, GPSs have been installed on the dashboard of boats, and often there's a wire going up to the top of the boat with some sort of transmitting signal, and that helps you view everything on your GPS screen, which is often embedded right on the dashboard. It can be kind of expensive. Of course, it depends on the level of GPS that you've purchased, but there is a different way and a very, very inexpensive practically free way to use a GPS, and that is by using a GPS on your phone. And by that, I don't mean using something like Google Maps, because when you're using Google Maps, you're really only going to get to see what's on the land. Of course, you'll see the water, but it's not going to tell you what's below you in the water. So I recommend downloading a boat navigation app on your cell phone. And I have one right over here, which is a great example. This particular app is exactly what you'd see on a paper chart and pretty much exactly what you'd see on a GPS screen. You'll see here that this is showing you all of the obstructions underwater, the different levels of the uh, seabed underneath you, as well as all the different buoys, which you can see here in the red and the green. 
So as you can see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is the same thing that you'd find on a GPS screen, but it's on my cell phone. So you can take it with you. You can even look at it, uh, you can mount it onto your dashboard so it's right in front of you so you don't have to take your eyes off of your viewing area. It's an absolutely fantastic, fantastic way to actually see where you're going. And like I said, it's just basically an app that you download on your phone. This particular view is a great view because you can see that this is an island in Long Island Sound and it is surrounded by rocks. And not only does it show you the rocks, it shows you the depth of the water as well as the buoys. So you can see that um, you need to follow the green and the red buoys to get to your destination. If you want to go into the harbor, you can even move this along. And of course, when you're actually out there, I'm not out there right now, it will always show you where you are and you can even put a history trail. You you can do things like chart plotting. You can do a ton of things. So it's really, really important to make sure that you're using this when you're navigating, especially in waters that you don't know. This particular area is the Long Island Sound. The north side of the Long Island Sound is a very, very rocky area. So it's very important that you follow the buoy system and you make sure that you are using your GPS. I know I use my GPS every single time I go out, even if I'm very familiar with the areas, because I don't want to wind up like that boat in the video that you just saw. So I'll give you one example of why it's important to use your GPS. Take a look at this particular view here. This is the Long Island Sound. If you are standing here or if you're standing here, this entire area is going to look like water that you can easily navigate in and there's no obstructions. However, if you look closely, and I'll zoom in for you, you can see here that there is a marker there. That particular marker is a lighthouse. That lighthouse represents the fact that there are rocks behind the lighthouse. And you really shouldn't be going between that lighthouse and those buoys there. Now the problem is people will sometimes not use their GPS and go right across and those rocks can be hit, especially at low tide. You may not even see them at all. So it's very, very important to use things like this. If you want to go around this area, you can either go on this side of the lighthouse or just go on the other side of those two red buoys, and then you'll be perfectly clear. Plenty of deep water there. The whole idea is that you navigate and you don't want to hit a rock because hitting a rock can be very, very expensive. In the case of that boat that I just showed you, I think it's totally totaled, and I don't think they're even going to be able to repair it. So remember, if you're out there boating, be safe, use your GPS. So the moral of the story is know where you're boating, know the water around you. Make sure that you are using a GPS, even if it's on your phone, because that can definitely save you from a lot of headaches in the future. I hope you enjoyed this video. I don't think the boater enjoyed his day too much. It's unfortunate, but these things do happen, and you can always work to prevent them by exercising prudence. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos from me. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel right there. Yes, I know, but I'll have to call you back because I'm using my phone to navigate.